I read an article one time where the authors expressed some disappointment in the descriptions of the Buddha's awakening that we find in the Pali Canon. Apparently he was expecting the description of a cosmic light show with enlightenment beams coming from all directions and penetrating into visions of the cosmos and all kinds of things. But instead, all you have is some pretty bare-bones stuff, the Buddha talking about realizing four truths, that there's stress and suffering, that there's a cause, there's a cessation of suffering, and there's a path to the cessation. And when he boiled it down even further than that, it was a principle of causality, which basically comes down to the idea that some causes have an effect immediately and others have an effect over time. Now, the reason the Buddha talked about these things is because they could be useful to the people who listened. I mean, hearing about the Cosmic Light Show doesn't really do anything for you. Learning about a principle of causality that you can apply to the problem of suffering, especially the suffering that you're creating for yourself. Now that's very useful. You get the same lesson from the Ajans in Thailand when their students had visions. They'd say, don't go into the details of the vision. Ask yourself, what's the Dharma lesson here? What's something you can take from it as a guide to how you're going to develop your mind? And particularly how are you going to understand how the mind creates a lot of unnecessary suffering for itself. Now that's something that's really useful. Because that principle of causality, if you sat down and tried to trace out everything that you're experiencing right now and ask yourself, well, which things come from past actions and which things come from present actions, you'd never be able to sort everything out. But you can use this as a guide to your practice when you get the mind to settle down and things are very, very still. If there's any appearance of stress, particularly more stress happening in the mind, ask yourself, can you see what you're doing right now that's causing that? This requires that you be very observant. Because all too often, all our attention goes to the stress, and we miss the action. We're looking in the wrong place. This is one of the reasons why when awakening comes, it does come suddenly, but it's not totally sudden as the Buddha compared it to the continental shelf off of India. There's a gradual slope and then a sudden drop. The reason for the gradual slope is because it takes a while for you to develop your powers of observation. And there are many layers of action going on in the mind at any one time. And you can catch a few things which will lighten the burden of suffering that you're creating for yourself or lighten the burden of stress. But only until your discernment is really well trained can you catch everything. So it's a bit by bit, by bit, you begin to see, oh, I'm doing this, and I don't have to. It's the I don't have to that's important there, because a lot of times we think in certain ways and believe that we have to think in those ways. A thought comes up in the mind, we feel compelled to run with it, or to complete it, or to figure out exactly what it's all about, or is there a lot of thoughts that aren't worth following that way? You have to learn how to sort them out. Or when there's a pain in the body, it's sometimes hard to separate which part is the pain, the physical side, and which is the mental side of the pain. That requires you to get the mind really, really still, which is another reason why the path is a gradual one. Because your skill in maintaining stillness is something that develops over time. If you devote yourself to it, if you work at it, 
use your powers of observation. It's in using the powers of observation, getting the mind to settle down. That's how you develop your discernment that you're going to use in order to drop any of your attachments, any of your clingings, any of your ignorance, cravings, any of the things, perceptions, whatever it is that are contributing to that burden of stress that you keep churning out for yourself. So when the Buddha taught that causal principle, he was teaching you the most important thing you need to know. In other words, that the stress that's weighing down the mind is something you're doing right now. It's your added intentional element to what you're experiencing right now. Because as the Buddha pointed out, we don't get our experiences ready-made, just handed to us. The mind is a pretty active shaper of its experience. A pleasure or experience of pain, experience of the world as a whole. And you want to catch it in the act of shaping. That's how you begin to see through the ways in which it is shaping things in an unskillful way, in a way that's awkward, in a way that's piling on more unnecessary stress. And you can learn how to undo that. So whenever the mind feels burdened, ask yourself, what am I doing that's contributing this? What am I doing right now? I mean, there may be things from the past that are contributing to it, the added stress, particularly habits you build up. But in order to undo these habits, we don't have to trace them back to childhood or trace them back to a previous life. We can keep asking ourselves, why am I doing this now? What's necessary about this now? What am I doing now? We have to keep our attention focused right here in the present moment, not because it's a wonderful moment, because what you're doing right now to create stress right now in the mind is happening right now. And you can take this apart bit by bit by bit. It's kind of like a large tapestry. You can pull out a couple of threads of the tapestry, and the tapestry is still there. But every now and then you find a thread, you pull it, and the whole thing collapses. You never know which one. But what you do know is that you're looking at the right place, if you're looking in the present moment, to see what you're doing. So try to develop the habit of doing things in a skillful way so you can begin to see the difference. When you slip back to your old unskillful habits, you'll notice. If you don't try to change your habits, you'll never see anything, because everything is just the way it was. This is why when we work on the mind, we really are working on the mind. I've been reading a lot about the Romantics and the psychologists who took their thought from the Romantics. And so much of it has to do with just well, accepting everything as it's coming up, because if you don't be open and accepting and receptive, you're not going to see anything in the deeper layers of your mind. There's a level of truth there. But you also need to know, once you see those things, what you do with them. And this is where those Four Noble Truths come in, because each of those truths has a task. Stress is to be comprehended. The actions you're doing that are causing the stress have to be stopped, abandoned. You develop the path so you can realize the end of suffering. These are four different duties, comprehending, letting go, developing, realizing. And they give you guidance. It's the same way with the teachings on mindfulness. The Buddha lists all the different types of mind states, not because he just wants you to note them and leave them as they are. Once you know what you've got, then you can put them in the context of which duty is appropriate. Because after all, these things aren't being presented to you ready-made. You're making them already. 
And if you catch yourself in the act of doing something unskillful, you want to stop. And if you're not sure, well, try to notice you know, when does the level of stress in the mind go up and when does it go down. And to do that, you've got to develop mindfulness, concentration, all the qualities of the path. So your mind's already active in shaping your experience, and so the Buddha gives you an active path to learn how to shape it in a more skillful way. In the process of doing that, you begin to see the difference between what's skillful and what's not, and gradations of skillfulness. It's developing that sensitivity that you learn how to take everything apart. Develop the Four Noble Truths to the point where John Munn says they all become one. In other words, there's just one duty. Everything gets let go. But that can happen only when you've been working on developing the path all the way. And where do you do that? You do it right here, right now. So you can learn how to watch the mind as it shapes its experience right here, right now. And then you can catch yourself in the act when you slip off and do something unskillful. So this is how you apply that teaching on causality. It's very basic and sounds pretty abstract, but it's not. It's talking about something you're doing right here, right now, pointing your nose right here, right now. It's like when you train puppies. They make a mess in the house, you put their nose in the mess, and then you take them outside. The Buddha is trying to put, you, put your nose in the mess that you're making right here, so you can recognize it as a mess. And learn that you don't have to do it anymore. <laughs>